Thank you, David. It's good to see so many people interested in this topic. As the um, title indicates, uh, you might think that I'm the um, naysayer, uh, spoiler in this group. I want to be very clear that that's not the case. I'm only uh, going to be correcting data for one site uh, for which incorrect data have been uh, presented. Uh, I want to make sure I um, acknowledge my co-authors on this uh, paper. These are the other data holders uh, for the vertebrates uh, that are included in the um, food web uh, studies and ecosystem studies at uh, Puerto Rico. I'd also like to acknowledge my student, Manoj Pandey, who uh, provided some of the updated uh, insect abundance data that we have since Hurricane uh, Maria. Okay, as background, as David indicated, uh, much of the uh, attention in the U.S. has been, has stemmed from this paper by Lister and Garcia that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That paper used open access data from the uh, Luquillo Experimental Forest Long-Term Ecological Research Project in Puerto Rico to claim that arthropod populations had declined 60% in 20-some uh, years and that the food webs had collapsed in Puerto Rico as a result and attributed this to a um, 20, uh, two degrees Celsius increase in temperature. And here's the uh, complete list during Garcia um, reference at the bottom, which I hope you'll ignore. Okay. Several long-term studies in Europe have documented, as you've heard previously, um, uh, declines in some insect groups. Nobody's actually looked at all insects, so you know any, any uh, uh, conclusions about arthropods as a whole are perhaps premature. But most of those studies have attributed those declines to habitat uh, uh, destruction and other factors, not temperature. Um, in fact, we might expect insects in some regions to increase in abundance as temperature in, uh, increases. I think much of the attention in the U.S. to this Lister and Garcia article stem from the fact that this is probably the longest term arthropod study in the Western Hemisphere. Consequently, report, uh, this study was reported in Washington Post, New York Times, National Geographic, The Guardian, The Atlantic, and a variety of others. And it's been very difficult catching up with uh, uh, all these been the subject of subsequent reviews and editorials in a variety of reputable journals. Now, if arthropod abundance had declined 60%, it would be obvious. We would have seen, and if uh, food webs had collapsed in Puerto Rico, we would have seen the evidence in the demise of a number of ecosystem services, such as pollination, decomposition, biological control, and so on. And as I'll show you, these, this is not the case in Puerto Rico. Give you some background on the site where we're working. This is a relatively protected site. Uh, we're working in the Caribbean National Forest, uh, El Junque, also known as the El Junque National Forest, a relatively large expanse in eastern, northeastern Puerto Rico, uh, much of which, uh, or the core of which at least, has been protected for the last several hundred years. It was a Spanish crown reserve prior to the U.S. Uh, acquiring Puerto Rico uh, in the late 1800s. It's a tropical rainforest, uh, 400 to 1,000 meters in elevation, constant, a relatively constant 25 to 27 degrees Celsius average temperature, 3,700 millimeters annual precipitation. It has a statistical dry season, January to April, and a wet season, May to December, and I say statistical because it has a pretty high rate of, uh, even during the dry season, uh, the, the site receives somewhat over 200 millimeters of precipitation a month. So it's pretty wet year round. This site has been a uh, long-term study site since the 1950s. It was established as a, what was then the Atomic Energy Commission site uh, to study the fluxes of radioactive uh, chemicals in a forest ecosystem in anticipation of what might happen in the event of a nuclear war. So those of us who grew up in that era remember that we had fallout shelters. We were concerned about what was going to happen when we had radioactive strontium and iodine in our uh, food sources. But one of the 
positive outcomes from all this was that this, that this site and others like it established around the United States, Oak Ridge uh, National Lab uh, and others, Savannah River National uh, uh, Reserve and others, uh, provided some of our earliest measurements of ecosystem structure and function, such as net primary production and respiration. We have some of the earliest measurements of plant, arthropod, and vertebrate responses to radiation exposure but those data also provided some of our earliest data on how nutrients uh, flux through ecosystems. We have a very well-documented um, arthropod diversity from the site. Uh, much of this is uh, documented in uh, uh, Atomic Energy Commission publication from 1970 called The Ecology of a Tropical Rainforest. And it has one of the most complete analyses of food webs anywhere in the world, and it's helped revise what we know about food chain length, uh, food, li uh, food chain linkages, um, uh, intragill predation, and so on. It also has probably the longest uh, record of a canopy arthropod and walking stick uh, responses to environmental changes over the last 30 years in the Western Hemisphere. The site has over 800 species of plants, more than 250 of those being tree species. It has 78 verte vertebrate species and more than 1,500 documented invertebrate species. So this is nowhere close to as diverse as Dr. Jansen was reporting for the mainland tropics in Costa Rica, for instance, but it's probably an order of magnitude more diverse than most of us are used to working with in temperate forests in the U.S. Okay, just a few of the rogues that, uh, you know, show you some pretty pictures of insects since we are, after all, an entomological society. We have some uh, tropical uh, walking sticks, which are the uh, uh, subject of um, focused studies. Uh, we have a variety of herbivores, including defoliators on the left and um, uh, some uh, scale insects and other sap-sucking insects on the right, and then uh, omnivores such as um, the Gaiotis slug. And then we have representative detritivores on the left here and representative predators on the right. So uh, I hope I've uh, satisfied you with at least a small selection of the players in this study. Okay. This forest is also subject to a variety of disturbances, as are all ecosystems. And we could include um, anthropogenic in, uh, ecosystems as well, because uh, uh, harvesting crops, uh, harvesting forests uh, constitute a disturbance in uh, managed ecosystems. All ecosystems have characteristic disturbances. Those in Puerto Rico are Hurricanes and droughts primarily. During the past 30 years, the site has had four major hurricanes. Uh, my project started just after Hurricane Hugo in 1989, followed 10 years later roughly by Hurricane George, and then two years ago by Hurricanes Irma and Maria. In addition, several minor hurricanes and tropical storms. Uh, during this period, we've had a, a sequence of uh, severe and less severe droughts and some uh, exceptionally wet years, and hundreds of landslides. This is what Hurricane Maria looked like as it passed over uh, uh, Puerto Rico two years ago in September. You can see that the island was completely engulfed by this massive uh, Category 4 hurricane. This was the uh, lab at Averde uh, prior to Hurricane Maria. This was taken in the summer of 2017. This was taken in October 2017 by a student who was able to access the site. So you can see that these disturbances can have a dramatic effect on the forest. Obviously, this level of effect on vegetation would have an equally severe effect on the uh, arthropod fauna. Okay, getting into the meat of this presentation then, here are some of the issues we have with um, the claimed arthropod decline at the Luquillo Experimental Forest. L Lister and Garcia did not analyze the open access data properly. They did not contact any of the data holders to find out how the data were structured and what appropriate analytical techniques would be. And none of us were asked to uh, review the paper primer prior to submission. Um, I should make a note uh, after saying that, that the, uh, uh, the current uh, editor-in-chief had no role in this, so uh, I want to be very careful to, uh, to note that um, 
uh, our friend and current EIC have not, uh, was not responsible for this, uh, this issue. Okay, first of all, Lister and Garcia combine two incompatible data sets. And the reason I say that, I'll, I'll point out in a moment here on the next slide. After Hurricane, or Hurricane Hugo damaged the temperature sensor at Averde, okay, it had been at the top of the tower when it started failing two years later and the discrepancies were noted. That temperature sensor was replaced, but when it was replaced, it was replaced at 1.5 meters above the ground. So it was subject to canopy closure as the forest recovered from Hurricane uh, Hugo. Consequently, that temperature sensor, the, the recordings from that temperature sensor were no longer comparable to the above canopy uh, temperature record prior to Hurricane Hugo. Second, arthropod abundances were summed across tree species and sites as they might have been appropriately had trees been sampled randomly uh, through the forest. They were not. The tree species, and I'll point this out in a moment too, were st uh, selected strategically to represent early and late successional species and overstory and understory species so we could see what happened to arthropods on these different tree species uh, as uh, time uh, went on. Sample size and sample effort uh, differences were not addressed and uh, frankly we've not been able to replicate some of the results of, uh, of uh, uh, Lister and Garcia. And uh, we have our rebuttal uh, response uh, cited there at the bottom. Okay, here's the uh, issue with the temperature records and I want to emphasize the um, temperature record on the left from El Verde. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the uh, trend that was reported by Lister and Garcia has a positive trend but you can see that, um, you see the cursor there, yes, whoops. Okay, the, uh, the temperature record during the period of uh, analysis following Hurricane Hugo is actually declining, again as I pointed out, as a result of canopy closure over that uh, temperature sensor. So in fact, temperature was going down rather than going up as it may have been for the uh, rest of the forest. Okay, our sampling technique, as I indicated, was looking specifically at how arthropods were changing on particular tree species to represent different functional roles. Um, we used this long-handled uh, insect net. You can see the, um, the bag at the top of this uh, uh, long-handled net, it's a closable uh, bag with a drawstring. So we could slip it over a branch, uh, break off the branch, and sort all the arthropods off of that. The study was initially set up to compare gaps and non-gaps uh, in the wake of Hurricane Hugo. Uh, we, sampled, we selected the trees as indicated for uh, specific functional aspects. And I won't go over the details of the arthropod sampling there, but uh, uh, that's all reported. Okay, so on the left here is the trend that was reported by um, Lister and Garcia. And yes, you could imagine that there is a slow decline over time there if you use your imagination, but the decline is not significant. They used a quadratic formula to try and force a negative relationship there, and we're not sure why they did that. But if we look at the actual temperature change during the period of analysis, you can see that mean density of arthropods on the right actually increases with temperature. And I will just quickly summarize that frogs and birds, which were the other topics of Lister and Garcia's paper, also showed no decline with time or temperature. And that incidentally is a Puerto Rican toady, which is a, a little um, thicket uh, dwelling bird, an insect gleaner about the size of a hummingbird, and it looks a bit like a hummingbird, right? Uh, but it's not even related. It's a tropical uh, uh, specialist in this forest. Okay, here are some data for two of the dominant scale insect species uh, that um, uh, occur in this forest. And uh, as you can see, we have the different hurricanes and droughts. The hurricanes are labeled in black. The droughts are labeled in gray. And you can see how the um, arthropod abundance very clearly maps changes in uh, precipitation and storm disturbance. 
And these are from an environmental entomology paper that was published in January 2017. Okay, similarly, you can see that frogs, uh, the trend in frogs, if you, if you, you know, just look at this as a um, uh, trend over time, you would say, yeah, it's declining. But you can see that there are peaks in abundance following Hurricane Hugo and Hurricane uh, George in, in uh, 1998. So hurricanes and uh, droughts clearly are structuring the arthropod abundance in these forests. We've updated the, uh, the trends. I've analyzed this just as total arthropod abundance, as did Lister and Garcia. And you can see that the trend um, here following Hurricane Maria is back up. Arthropod abundances following Hurricane Maria are higher than they were following Hurricane Hugo. So these, that was the previous high point in the record. And uh, there are some other discrepancies in Lister and Garcia that I'll talk about. But in conclusion, or I won't talk about, excuse me. In conclusion, arthropods have not declined and food webs have not declined at the Lukio Experimental Forest. Hurricanes and droughts are the primary drivers of variation in arthropod and vertebrate abundances at this site. Obviously, insect declines have been well documented in Europe and some other places, and I don't want to challenge those. Uh, we obviously need to be attentive, and we need to have more long-term studies that, uh, that document long-term trends. We suggest that protocols should be established for the use of open access data to ensure proper, ac proper analysis and conclusions. Obviously, if science is misrepresented to the public, that can uh, erode confidence in scientific uh, conclusions and recommendations, and we need to be very careful that we you know, call out wrong science at the same time that we try to make sure that, you know, that these threats to biodiversity uh, globally are addressed. Thank you.